Hello and welcome back to the final read through chapter, chapter 5. Obviously the story does continue but I am only reading up to 5 chapters because quite frankly not many people have been watching it and it takes a long time for all of this set up. So um, for those of you that have watched I hope you enjoyed and um, this chapter is quite short so I don't know if that's a good thing. Uh, I don't know what you're looking for but <laughs> Here's chapter five. So this is uh, the dream. Finn found himself standing in an exotic landscape. It was unbearably hot and all around him was yellow sand as far as the eye could see. It was too, far too bright. He narrowed his eyes, barely able to see as the, sim as the sun beated down hard upon him. He saw movement in the distance, and a sound, a sound of a tiny animal. He shielded his eyes, and with his hand he looked into the distance. The air was so hot he could only see shapes in the haze of the heat on the ground, distorting his view. He moved closer to investigate the sound. He saw four fox pups, two black and two white, crying at a strange bluish blob as he walked closer. Finn could not understand what he was seeing. It made no sense to his eyes in the intense sun. He walked closer still. The pups seemed to notice his presence. One black and one white ran straight to him, excited as if they knew him, whilst the other black and white pup stood staring at him, rearing themselves into the blue creature that lay behind them. Finn knelt down to the charging pups. They yapped at him and licked his hands as if overjoyed by his presence. He gave a small curious smile as he patted each pup on the head. The two other pups slowly began their approach as they saw there was no danger to be had. As the two fox pups moved towards him, he saw that they were covering the head of a strange scorpion-like creature. Whilst now painfully still, Finn stared at the beast, confused. The creature was translucent. It glittered in the sun with a bluish hue. Its shell rippled like water. He looked down as he felt his clothes tugged. The pups pulled him towards the strange-looking mythical creature. He followed and watched as the creature turned its head towards him, laboured as if injured. He was surprised by the size of the scorpion, almost as long as he stood tall. Even though it had the anatomy of a scorpion, there was something strangely human about it. Its shell constantly seemed to be in movement, even as it laid still. The creature looked up at him, through narrowed eyes, pained. He had no idea why, but he felt an instant connection to this creature as if he had to protect it. As he did, fox pups... Oh, no, I've jumped ahead there. He softly laid his hands on its back as if to reassure it of, its prote it of his protection. As he did, the fox pups cried and day instantly turned to night. He looked down to find the scorpion was no longer under his hand and the fox pups have also disappeared. He stood up, feeling a threat, an unseen foe. He felt the air move. He felt something approaching him, and possibly fast. He turned, but there was nothing there. It was deathly silent, until he heard a voice, a deep, menacing, inhuman voice. Protect her. Finn instantly opened his eyes, startled, the light so bright it hurt. Slowly he blinked, looking around. He was in bed, a window just above his head lay to his left. Finn looked to his right and saw a comfortable armchair. The chair looked old and well used, with the floral patterning fading on the back and the seat. He looked at the ceiling, all exposed beams. A small building, but well made. As Finn awoke fully, he heard noises, a soft musical humming of a woman. He slowly sat up, shaking. He looked at the woman who stood opposite him. 
He placed his feet on the floor and instantly tried to stand up, but his legs gave way beneath him. Why am I so weak? He thought. The woman instantly jumped in the air, surprised by the sound. She quickly turned around to see the cause of the noise. Finn! She smiled with her hands to her chest, his vision still blurry, and he could not see her correctly. She slowly approached him with her hands held out to help him. Finn, it's me, Grenadine. She said softly. Slowly she knelt to him. Patiently she waited as he blinked, adjusting his eyes so he looked up at her. His vision eventually returned and he saw her, the woman with impossibly long straight hair with a blue hue, the sorceress from the village. What is going on? He looked around confused. What happened? Where am I? He asked. She held out her hand to him. He accepted her assistance and she helped him up. She quickly explained the series of events that had brought him there. You fought the griffin, remember? You were injured and poisoned, and I brought you here. Do you remember the storm? You've been unconscious for almost three weeks. I've been caring for you. You brought me here, she nodded. By yourself? She looked down at his bo He looked down at his body and saw the mass of fresh bandages he was covered in. He also felt clean. She must have been washing me, he thought curiously. You fixed me up. You saved my life. She smiled softly at him. And before this, you made that room for me. You left a note. She took hold of his hand, leading him to the dining table. Come. You must be starving. Do you want something to eat? He nodded, and silently with a limp, made his way to the table. I'm sure you'll feel better after some food. It's chicken stew. She sat a tankard in front of him and filled it with a dark ale without asking. He took hold of it and gulped it down in one. She lo he looked at the empty tankard, then at Gwenadon. Is this ale from your father? She laughed, her hair bouncing around her face. As she turned her head to him. No, it's not. Where is it from, then? I made it. You made this ale? She nodded. Yeah. Finn smiled. I think you should be the one that owns the inn. I've tasted ale from across the land, but nothing like this. Could I have another? She blushed, but hid underneath her hair. She fetched him another ale but he took more time to enjoy this one. She just dished up the stew in the wooden bowls and walked before him. Like an animal, Fulton dived into the bowl and finished it in no time at all. Gwendolyn watched him, stunned. He looked up at her nervously. Do you have any more? She smiled, taking the bowl, of course. She took the bowl from him and turned to the kitchen right behind her to her left. The pot she made the stew in was large, and she had to stretch to reach into it. It was only then he realised what she was wearing. A small nightdress with no undergarments beneath. Finn smiled as he saw her soft round bottom appear from underneath her dress. He was quick to avert his eyes as she turned around and handed him the bowl. Thank you, he whispered. She smiled sweetly back at him. Three weeks, did you say? That I've been unconscious for, Finn asked. Gwendolyn nodded, busy eating from her bowl. She seemed just as hungry as he did. Sorry to have convenienced you for so long. Gwendolyn stopped eating and looked at him. Don't worry yourself. You've been no much. You haven't been much convenience at all, to be honest. No more than looking after a fish. He gave her a soft, appreciative smile. Once I've collected my fee for slaying the griffin, I will repay you. Gwenadin's eyes widened as she shook her head at him, staring into his eyes as if he had said something awful. She waved her hand at him dismissively. No, I will not accept coin as payment from you. He 
He looked at her, surprised. It was just a way of life for him. He had never known anyone not to accept coin before. I heal people to help, not for greed. He sat back in his chair and looked about her home. Did you not pay with this? Did you not pay for this with coin? She shook her head at him. No, I built this place by myself. Well, with help from the villagers, of course. He curled his lips at her with a nod, both impressed and curious about her. Very impressive. Who knew a sorceress could use their own hands for something other than magic? You're very interesting, Gwenadon. She held her head, hand up to him. Please, call me Gwen. He shot her a smile with a slight nod. Very well, Gwen. You have not lived here all your life. I thought I could tell from your accent. Sounds like you hail from a city, and I'm guessing the innkeeper's not really your father. She gave a small laugh, taking a sip of her ale. She was becoming a little concerned over his questions, but it was all seemed to be because of curiosity rather than anything else. She decided to remain relaxed for now, as she knew he could hear the sound of her heartbeat. No, Daniel is not actually my father. He's just been like a father to me ever since I moved here. And you're right, I grew up in a city. That was a very, very long time ago. I'm surprised you can still hear it in my accent. Finn sat up in his chair, taking a drink of his own. He was all so curious about her. She was so much of a mystery, but still he could feel the magical energy, electric energy that flowed from her. He found it a little dizzying. He watched her take a drink of her own. As she tilted her head back, he watched as beads of sweat from the hot weather rolled down her collarbone and down her chest. She knew he was looking, but she didn't mind. As she put down her tankard, they both stared at each other for what felt like the longest time. But it didn't make it neither, either of them uncomfortable. It was a stare of fascination, trying to understand each other without words. Grenadine could not de deny her allure to Finn, even as she cared for him motion cared for his motionless body for weeks. But she was fearful. Grenadine could not afford to let him know her secret. Eventually she cleared her throat and looked away from his obnoxious eyes. So, Nimrod, tell me how you came to me in such a sorry state. Surely there must be a story there. Finn sighed. He hated being called Nimrod. That was no longer his title, but he did not have the strength to correct her. Not much of a story. The villagers, the village that hired me to deal with their insect problem, and I was ill-prepared. I stumbled upon a nest. That's how I got poisoned, by the butler. I dealt with the nest and killed the insects, but as I rode back to the village to collect my fee, I made a startling discovery. Everyone was dead. Oh, oh, what happened? Gwen didn't ask, concerned. Finn pulled his fingers through the longest part of his hair, moving long strands away from his eyes. He gave a deep, heavy breath, looking into his tankard. It seemed that they were so concerned about the bitlers, they failed to tell me of the wars that had been waging between the surrounding villages. The rotting bodies had attracted a pact of bioguests. That's, that's what ended up killing all of them. He sighed and looked away, looked up at her. I looked around for survivors, but I was too late. So poisoned, with no payment, I told Shock to take me to the nearest healer. Here we are. Gwendolyn looked at him with sad eyes. This awful story, so sad. She paused, looking away, and then looked back into his eyes. You shock. Uh, my stallion. Gwenadin looked at him, puzzled. You named your stallion Shock. Her expression, expressive face showed that she was unimpressed with the name. I, what's the problem? She laughed, shaking her head at him. Well, a little on the nose, is it not? Considering your profession, naming your stallion after such a beast? She stood up with a smile. Anyway, 
I have your stallion here, as well as everything else you left at the inn. She crossed her arms. Speaking of which, your stallion is becoming far too familiar with my mare. I'm not looking for foals running around here. I gave a small laugh. Come, let the boy have his fun. She gave him a pout, pretending to be angry. He looked at her from under his eyebrows. Would you like me to have a word with him? She laughed at him. She had never felt so instantly comfortable around a stranger before. She gestured for him to stand. He's out here. I think he's been missing you. She, go she said with soft eyes, watching him stand painfully. Finn laughed, walking around the table to her side. From what you tell me, I don't think he is. As he left the house, he was amazed by what he saw. Surrounded by forest, but a clearing that looked almost man-made for Gwynedin's house to sit right in the middle of. A stream ran a mere couple of paces away from the home and sparkled in the sun. A large willow tree hung from the wall into the water, offering shade if needed. He smiled at the picturesque place, at how the picturesque, how picturesque the place looked, but said nothing. Gwynedin saw his appreciation. She did not need to hear his words. They walked around the back of the house, where the stable was almost the same size as the house it was attached to. There he saw one of the most beautiful sources of his life grazing the shock. The mare was immaculate. Her coat shimmered blue in the light and shone a perfect pitch of black. The mare's mane was long and wavy and its muscle tone prominent. He wondered if there had ever been a horse and rider that ever looked as perfectly matched as Gwynedin and her mare. But the mare was a tall horse. He wondered, considering the small height of Gwynedin, how she ever rode such a beast. That's your mare, he exclaimed. She smiled and nodded. Her name's Shadow. She seemed completely unfazed by his response. He presumed she must just be used to it. He walked up to a shock and he was stunned by the condition of his horse. Sure, he was never one to run his horse ragged, but he never bothered with aesthetic grooming. His coat was shining, his mane and tail were brushed, washed, cut and plaited tight to his skin. Finn gave an unbelievable laugh. As soon as Shuck saw him, he came walking up to Finn. He neighed and rubbed his face on him. My God, Shuck, what a handsome boy you are under all that mud. He looked at Gwynedin with a huge smile. He did this. She nodded her head and gave a slight shrug. There was nothing. I was grooming Shadow. She said whilst patting Shadow. It wasn't much extra trouble to groom Shock to. I think he enjoyed the attention. Finn looked at her with a cheeky grin. What male wouldn't enjoy a grooming from a beautiful woman such as yourself? She looked away, hiding behind Shadow's face. Finn, please. Suddenly, everything turned dizzy. Finn reached for his head. His legs gave way beneath him. Finn! Gwynedin ran to him, holding him. He lifted his head and shook, feeling overwhelmingly weak. Come on, let's get you back to bed. The bitless poison is not some, some serious stuff, even for a nimrod. Slowly she helped him walk in front of the door, but suddenly he paused, stopping her. Gwynedin, stop, he said vacantly, and instantly he vomited, clinging to Gwynedin. You ate and drank too quickly. Come. I'll get you back to bed. I shall bring you some more stew. Finn just groaned as he held on to Finn just groaned as she helped him back to bed. As soon as his head hit the pit, touched the pillow, he was instantly asleep. Gwendolyn pulled the covers over him and wiped the vomit from his mouth. You will be the death of me, Nimrod. Sat in the flickering candlelight of the laboratory, 
surrounded by jars of curiosities containing all manner of indescribable, non-savoury ingredients. A mage sat by his al alchemic table, looking sadly upon his works, his beautiful face twisted by boredom. He sat back in his chair with a slouch and pulled his long, elegant fingers through his dark hair. He gave a hopeless sigh, staring into space. He was beginning to think of Grenadine, his star and crowning achievement in his career. He wondered where she was, what she was doing. He stretched his legs under his desk and accidentally kicked a wooden box. Surprised, he sat up straight and looked under the table to see the thing he had kicked. It was a large wooden crate. He pulled it from the back of the wall to his feet. So long that it sat so long had it sat still that it was covered in dust. He looked at his hands as if horrified by the dust covering his fingertips. He took a rag from the table and wiped the dust from the box. His lips upturned as if disgusted by the menial task he was committing. He threw the rag to the floor and continued to open the mysterious old box. It was filled with parchment, books and sketches concerning his previous works from the decade prior. He began to pull the papers from the box, looking them over with an exhausted sigh. He held the leather-bound book in his hand. In his hand, he pulled open the page that held, held a small rope tied around a seashell. He began to read the words he had read so many times before, but he still knew the sentences off by heart, even all these years on. But something distracted him. He felt energy humming from the box. An energy he knew all too well, but had not felt in a long time. He looked curiously into the box, setting it down. Setting down the book, he pushed his hands through the papers, following the vibration of magic, until he came across a cold metal box. Taking hold of it, he pulled it from the parchments, and placed a fist-sized box on the table. It was glowing with green... It was golden with glowing green windows, decorated ornately. He slowly smiled as he opened the top round lid of the box. Inside sat a lock of silk raven-coloured hair tied in a red ribbon. His smile became more manic as he pulled the lock of hair from the box and held it in front of his face. He removed the hair from the box and the box's windows instantly stopped glowing with all its magical energy ceasing. He pulled his lips back to reveal his teeth in a hideous wolf-like smile. He stared at the hair as if crazed. I knew it, Gwenadon. I knew you would find. I knew I would find a way to you. It took me ten years, but you slipped up, haven't you? I knew you would not go through life magicless. You are too powerful for such a life. He pulled back the he pulled the hair back in the box, watching suddenly as it began to glow again. I will be seeing you again soon, my beautiful little monster. And that is the end of chapter five. So I hope you enjoyed, and um, if you want to hear any more of the other chapters. Uh, get in touch, leave a comment or like, all that other stuff, uh, subscribe, whatever people do. And um, if not, uh, the book's already available on Amazon, links all down below. And I hope you have a great day. So, see you next time. Bye.